This is the Action Movie Guys podcast, bringing you action movie reviews from across the decades, plus box office numbers and insight like never before. And now, your hosts of the Action Movie Guys podcast, Alex and Nate. Welcome, everyone, to a brand new episode of the Action Movie Guys podcast. I'm your host, Alex Bigoro, and my co-host is... Nate. Some Netflix reviews. Welcome to episode 55. We are tackling the sequel to The Matrix with The Matrix Reloaded from 2003. Nate, how long has it been since you've seen The Matrix Reloaded? Uh, in full, it's been a little while, a couple of years. Um, but if you guys know, if you listen to our live shows, I picked a scene from this movie as one of my all-time favorite action scenes. So I've seen that scene about a thousand times since... since uh, since the you know movie came out, but the movie itself, I would say maybe six, five, six years since I watched the whole thing. Yeah, it's been a while since I've seen it. Also, it's not kind of my favorite, but we're gonna break that all down today um, with the podcast. Sure. But again, for those of you that are watching us on YouTube, please hit that like button if you're enjoying this review. Please hit the notification bell so every time we go live or new videos drop, you guys will be notified. And of course, if you're new to the channel, please hit the subscribe button to support the channel. And of course, for those of you that take us on the go, uh, please subscribe to the channel. Hit those auto um, downloads so every time we upload new videos, I mean new audio, you guys can get them automatically and listen to them and leave some ratings, hit some rankings, right? That's how that, yep. that works all up yeah. in there. Give yeah. us five stars and give us a comment. Yep. And then, of course, we're going to give you the agenda right now. We're going to go right into box office numbers, Rotten Tomatoes, right into the movie review. So let's start it off with the box office numbers for The Matrix Reloaded from 2003. Nate. Okay, this this had to be a huge hit. I remember when it was coming out, it was the biggest thing since sliced bread. Okay, everyone's seeing The Matrix Reloaded. I was 16. This was a rated R film I went to see in the theater. I was like, yes, I'm going to go see this movie. Can't wait. I think this movie made over it made over 200 million. So I'm going to say The Matrix Reloaded made 242 million dollars. 242 million? 242. Yep. All right, so you go is Nate right did The Matrix Reloaded hit 241? Well, the answer is no. Uh domestic right. yeah. it came out to <laughs> 281 million dollars. Uh, I was so- under yeah, you were under. So it was two hundred and eighty-one oh, million five hundred seventy-six thousand four hundred sixty-one dollars. International four hundred and sixty million two hundred seventy-one thousand four hundred and seventy-six dollars on a worldwide total of seven hundred forty-one million eight hundred and forty-seven thousand nine hundred and thirty-seven dollars on a budget of a hundred and fifty million dollars. <laughs> yes. yes, that's what I like to call a smasher right there. That's a smasher. That's five times its budget, essentially. Yeah. And that's a billion in today dollars, by the way, folks. Uh, I know we stopped doing the uh, the box office, like translating it. Yeah. But uh, that's over a billion if it comes out now. Yeah, big hit. I I, I, can't, I underestimated it. So, yeah, that's that's pretty good. Now, Rotten Tomato scores. You guys know how this goes. I am going to. I have the knowledge. I have the Rotten Tomato scores in front of me. Alex goes ahead and tries to guess. The last couple of weeks, he's been pretty close. He's been, well, usually on one of them. He's like within one or two points. Let's see how he does here. Major two loaded critical score and audience score. What All right. Got? So the, the critic score, I'm going to give it a 75. Okay. Okay. Um, yep. The audience score, hmm, I might go with a 69 on this one. 75. A 69. All right. 75 and 69. All right, Alex. You're very close again. You're very close. So, um, okay. yeah, neither uh, both of us are always kind of close and never exactly right, except Black Panther that one mm. time. Um, so, audience score. All right, excuse me, critic score, seventy three. Oh my god, from two two percent off. Oh, two percent off, and you're only three percent off on the audience score because it's a seventy two percent. So, um, mm. look, the, you, the the critics liked it slightly less than you said, and the audience slightly more, but. This is very, this is, rarely do they see so eye to eye, 73 and 72. Like, yeah. pretty much the same, the same thing. So, um, it's a fresh movie, certified fresh, good reviews, a lot of money, sounds very popular, right? But, you know, you know how this goes. That's Alex, right. Tell them, tell them how it goes. This is the way it goes. The way The Rock always said it, it doesn't matter what the critics <laughs> and the audience saw. <laughs> critics and the audience says, it's what we say here in our review because you're here to listen to us. Mm-hmm. Um, with that said, before we start into the main review, all the criteria you need to know are uh, lead character, main villain, action scene, storyline, overall, total points. 
And then there you have it, guys. You can leave it uh, down below on YouTube. If you've seen The Matrix Reloaders, let us know your thoughts on the film. But let's get right into it with our lead character, Keanu Reeves, as Neo. Yes, Neo. Now, um, so last in the first movie, I gave him a four. And I'm going to stick with a four here. Uh, he's the diff- He's a different character in this movie than he was in the first movie. Okay. He's because he's no longer discovering what the matrix is, right? At this point in the storyline, he is in there. He's fully involved. Not only that, he has learned a lot of powers, you know, time has passed and he has really developed um, his abilities. But as a character, I can't say that he's developed He's still, you know, he's still, most of his dialogue still consists of asking a lot of questions to a lot of people. And that's just the way, that's not on Keanu at all, but it's the way it's written, right? And we're scoring the character, not the actor. Because Keanu Keanu still is great as Neo, in my opinion. You know, like, he's great in the action scenes. Obviously, the fighting scenes, he's believable. He's uh, tall. You know, like, he just looks good doing all the stuff. He looks good in the outfits. He's great. But the character itself is just, I wish he's just below being, like, really a great, great, great character. He's, He's good. He's cool. He looks cool. He fights great. You root for him. But they didn't really develop him too much, so I give him a four again. You know, I kind of agree with you when uh, I re- when I was re-watching it. And I did it today because I wanted it fresh in my mind when we go into this review. And I totally agree with you. Like, I didn't see the character progress in development as much. Like, he did a little bit towards the end, right? Because it concludes to the next movie, right? So right. it gave you a little bit throughout. But I didn't enjoy it. Like, I, I was just like, mm, it, it's not a sequel to me, like, as a sequel where you, where you you know what I mean? When you, you stretch out the character, right? You, you're going to give them something new. They gave you all that towards the last 10 minutes of the movie. They gave you all yep. that. But you're right. Everything in the first hour or so minutes is all questions. Why? Why am I doing this? Why, well, if yeah. you already knew if I'm doing this, then why am I doing it? And it's so many yep. questions. And then... And then uh, we'll talk about the, the main villain. But with that said, yeah. I get, I agree with you. Keanu Reeves was excellent as Neo. He knew his character in and out. The Kung Fu was great. We'll talk about that in action scenes. He did uh-huh. all that stuff very great. So I agree with you. I gave him a four. I, I couldn't give yeah. him a perfect. There's no, I can't. Hopefully the third movie is a charm for him to get a perfect. But right now he got a four. Um, main yeah. villain. All right, so not much. I mean, so I scored Hugo Weaving again as uh, Smith, yeah, right, a- agent. But he's not really an agent anymore because he's been he's been unlocked by by what Neo did in the first movie, yeah. right? All right, here's my thing. I like him better in the Mat- in the original Matrix than I do in this movie. He's not in it a lot, okay, and then he's in it too much in the sense of he makes a million copies of himself. So at that point, it's like you. you Who's the real one? I don't know. I don't know who's the original. It could be any of them. It, it kind of takes away from the character, in my opinion, when there's a thousand of him running around, personally. Um, he still looks cool. He still fight. I love the way Hugo Weaving portrays the character. Similar to Keanu Reeves, like, he's a perfect actor for that role. His voice, I love it. But I actually like him less in this movie. Plus, you have the whole threat. There, there's other threats in this movie. There's a lot going on in the, the machines and... You could say the truly the machines are the main villain of the whole Matrix storyline, but we, we're trying to pick one that you can kind of put a face to. I gave him a three. I, I, I like him better in the Matrix than I do in the Matrix Reloaded as a villain. So, yeah, I gave him a three. All right. Oh, man. Um, we're there, right? Like, I, I didn't give yeah. him a three, but I kind of understand yeah. your points because I, I felt the same way because I when I was giving the scores, I was going towards the three. But then I was like, wait a minute, we're in a sequel, right? Like, like he yeah. he developed. His character got more stronger, right? He got That is he, true. Right? He got more power. He got new abilities. Yeah, yeah, right? Like he got more powers. He's more like, I'm free. I can do whatever I want. And I there's one mission and it's to take down Neo. So I was like, okay, this is cool. So I give him a four, right? Because I was like, they gave him new powers. You're you're right. The actor is excellent in this role. Like, even rewatching mm-hmm. it, I'm like. It's believable. Him and Keanu Reeves got great chemistry when they're on yep, screen absolutely. together. So for mm-hmm. me, it worked. And I gave him that extra point higher than yours because they gave him more ability and more character development than Neo, right? Like, if you really think about it, this one was more Agent Smith type movie than a, a, yeah. a Neo movie. I, I guess Neo yeah. gets his shine in the third one, which, again, we were going to watch and yeah. we'll break it down. Um, but for me, I gave him a four and you gave it a three. Um, action. Right Scenes. <laughs> okay. Oh. Listen. Listen to me. 
This has still <laughs> one of, if not my favorite action scene in a movie, period. From the moment that they are in the big like castle looking room with the with the um with the Merovingian. That's right? my dude, bro. Merovingian great, by the way. And Monica that. Bellucci. I mean yeah, Monica I Bellucci. Know. I mean, come on, please. Stop it. Please stop it. Um she gets a five for the action scenes, her by herself. Um listen, from the moment Keanu Reeves tells them to take the keymaker and run and he fights all those guys in that room. Yeah. And the Millie Vanilli twins chase after Morpheus <laughs> and, and Trinity and the Keymaker. That is like 30 minutes of an action scene. It is it's super long. It's extremely well executed. It looks incredible. The whole thing is filmed incredible. We got Escalades, Cadillac CTSs. We got Ducatis. We got semi-trucks, sword fighting, gun fighting, knife fighting, ghost twins, it's, it's like it has every single element plus hand-to-hand fighting. Uh, for that scene alone, I'd give it a five. But on top of that, there's other gr- other great scenes. Yeah, I even love the small ones. I love when he's fighting the 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 Asian guy who's like the Oracle's like protector guy, and they're fighting in that room. Score. It's like a classic Sc- score. Yeah, I, I don't remember like his name, but yeah, they, they're fighting, and it's like a classic martial arts type fight. Besides some shoddy CGI in the fight with the thousand Agent Smiths, you know. It doesn't look great now. It looked good at the time, I'll be honest. But, you know, it hasn't aged that well. But when it's live actors, all the wire work's incredible. I give the action, I'd give it a six if we were allowed to give it a six. But I'm going to give it a five. It is. It, it doesn't disappoint in any way, shape, or form at all. Yeah, look, in terms of action, I'm trying to see if I can get that the, the, the guy who protects the Oracle's name. Yeah, um, the Asian guy. He looked like Jet Steph, Lee's cousin. Steph Ralph? Uh, S-E-R-A-P-H. Yeah, that guy is that guy. <laughs> Pretty much that guy. But anyway, Asian dude, man, he was awesome. Yeah, he was awesome. But anyway, in terms of action, you uh, look, I was because it's been ages since I've seen this movie. All right. And there's certain and I want to talk about some nitpicks uh, of the action. Sure. But let's just talk about the pros because you're absolutely right. That highway scene was 45 minutes long. <laughs> like It was straightforward. Like the minute Morpheus. They turn that escalate to the side and he goes, you take the key master and he's standing there with the swords and the twins come. And from there on, it's straight blown highway Neo in the other side of the world. And and he's flying like Superman to get to them. It is nonstop action. Right. So you're like, holy crap. Like, this is really good. What Kowski's know how to do some good action scenes. Right. Um, I was like, all right, that's pretty cool. You got the like you said the 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 one in the restaurant looked really great, right? The one yep. in the, the before he meets the key master, he has a test to see if Neo is the one. You're right, yep. awesome. The one that um they're doing the meeting in the beginning of the movie, right? And then they go, um, Agent Smith gives the earpiece, and then he goes, yeah, go, you know, go tell them the meeting's over. And they're like, why? He goes, agents are coming, and then the doors open. Oh, when and he then, fights the three guys at the same yeah, time. Yeah, and then he goes, hmm, yeah. upgrades, right? And then the music got yeah. all crazy, and then he's doing his kung fu. So I said, all right, sick. Good yep. stuff. I was like, "Wow, this is actually pretty good." And it's all awesome. Not the the cons that I really don't don't like, and I know a lot of people are gonna be like, "Oh, dude, really?" I do not, and I will say this again. And I hated it even when I saw this in the theater in the original day. I hate the scene that Morpheus. I mean, Morpheus Neo is in the park with all the agents fighting. With the thousands of agents. It is yeah. horrible now. And it was horrible when I saw it in the theater because you could tell it was CGI in in the IMAX. At the time, it was like IMAX. So you yeah. could see it. It was bad. And it still, it looks even worse in 4K. I agree. The CGI scene looks not good. You're right. I, 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 I'm, I'm, not I saying, I'm not saying but the scene itself. Of, yeah, there's a lot of stuff in that scene that's people and wires. And no, no, it looks no. amazing. But that's what yeah. I mean. Like the, the practical looks great. When Neo, when yeah. Keanu Reeves is fighting Agent Smith and then you can tell the body yeah. doubles are in, that looks all cool. But once they switch into CGI, it, it, does, like it, take, it takes, yeah, it looks like a PlayStation <laughs> 5. No, actually, a PlayStation 1. And, and they just threw it into a, a, a PS, um, PS3. Yeah, PS3. All right. That's the, <laughs> that, it, looks like a, it looks like a PS3 graphics. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, they're switching between a crisp 4K and then back to 720. You're like, wait a minute, this does not work. And it doesn't even work in the 4K. It looks even worse. Like when he's spinning I, the I, stick. I, I can't argue with you. Yeah. He's spinning the stick. And I was like, what? When he's the running hell? on it. Yeah. Oh. yeah, and then when he does the Superman, when he's flying in the air, that looks yeah. even worse. I said, oh, no, 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 no. Like him in, in like, not the, uh, I don't want people to be like, what are you talking about? 
the scene that he he goes all the way through the the, the cloud and then uh, um, Link goes he's doing his Superman thing and then he turns yeah. around and then he goes even faster. That yeah. looks CGI and I was like, this is not good. I was like, uh uh uh. But again, in terms of action, I gave it a five. There was no, I mean, it doesn't yeah. even matter. You, know, you could throw away the, the the CGI, the kung fu. Yeah, because it's two thousand three CGI. You know, they right. only had so much technology. But you're right, right. especially in four K. It's like it looks like a video game. Yeah. Um. Because it's a beautiful 4K. It's beautiful. Everything else. Yeah, it looks great. You're right. I agree with you. Yep. Yeah. And I don't want people to be like, oh, man, you know, it's just even when you see, when I saw it in the theater, that scene mm-hmm. always looked weird because you saw Keanu Reeves and <laughs> Matt Clear, and then all of a sudden it goes right into some graphics, and you're like, whoa. Yeah. You couldn't not even, <laughs> like, anyway, it is what it is. Yeah, I, but, I hear you. But let's get right into the storyline. Okay. Now, here's, this is, this is where, People get divided on this movie, personally. So I'm going to be 100% honest. This is a movie that when I first watched it, I was 16 years old. I had no idea what was going on. Okay? <laughs> I had no idea what was going on. Because, because all the storyline is delivered. I had the base premise. Robots are coming. We, the, Neo and them are trying to, you know, do his the one prophecy thing. Yeah. And these robots are coming to destroy Zion. That's like the base storyline, right? But there's a lot more to it. Yeah. And all of the conversations, the dialogue is so dense, okay? The, it's very, the language is very verbose, you know what I mean? It's very big, you, a lot of big words. The scene with the architect alone, you, you, you need subtitles and a translator to, you know, to get it. However, as an adult, I have matured. My brain is smarter than it was when it was 16. (laughs) And I now understand a lot of what they're saying. So I actually really like the storyline in this movie. The title, The Matrix Reloaded, you know, the whole movie is about the fact that, uh, well, we do spoilers here, that The Matrix is reloading because every time there's a new one, and and this is the sixth time, you know, you you get a lot of revelations in this movie that kind of, Mess with the first movie, which I think is interesting to do in a sequel. Um, he's not the first one. He's actually the sixth. And this continues. This is a never-ending cycle of The Matrix reloading. And now, leading into the third movie, he makes a choice that none of the other ones did. And this is where it throws it all into chaos. I actually really like the storyline. I don't think it's as great as the first one because it is a little dense. And you may have to like read some articles about it after or whatever or watch it a lot of times. So I, I didn't give it the five, but I enjoy it quite a bit. I gave it a four. All right. Let me see. How would I put this? <laughs> Good luck. <laughs> um, when I saw it, I saw it for action. And I do it with all my movies. Look, I'm an action dude. You know, some movies you do get the you know the storyline if it's right there for you. But movies like this, you got to go deep in it. Like, you you got to go straight Matrix status yourself to, to, to yes. even understand this damn movie. Even watching it now, like you said, like you're you, you're an adult, you're trying to figure. I'm I was a little here and there, right? Like because sure. again, like I for me, I haven't seen them in ages, right? Mm-hmm. And now we're doing it for the podcasts for the podcast. So when I sat back and I started to watch it, I'm like, okay, cool. But then when they go into the architect room, I was lost. I was like, Jesus Christ! Yeah. I'm like, here we go again. Like I was, I felt like I was a, a teenager again. I'm like, oh lord, oh my. <laughs> Right. Yeah. But I kind of understood what you were saying. Like, yeah, it, it's a pretty cool. It is a pretty cool story. I'm not going to knock points or whatever because of, of you know, because I didn't understand it or whatever. And again, from, and I'm going to say this now. And I've been saying this since we started the Matrix. Matrix is not my number one franchise. And I said it when we sure. were starting it. I just put it once when I want to enjoy watching Keanu Reeves kick ass. So yep. with that said, I gave it a three. And the reason why Fair. I gave it a three is. Because the story is so complex that you have to sit down and watch it for the story while you try to ignore the action, right? Because you're trying to mm-hmm. get the, like the, the speaking. Because you get lost, man. Like, I'm not going to lie. When they're fighting, yeah. you're, you're in the fight, and then they're talking, and then you're like, holy crap, now I got to turn off my, my adrenaline because I, I, you know that, that fight scene was so good to hear what they were saying. So it's a very yeah. complex story, and I already know it's going to get even more complex by the third one when we sit down and watch it. <laughs> but I, I, I give it a three. I'm going to be really honest. I can't give yeah. it a four in a movie that I know. I mean, I'm just like, okay, it is what it yeah, is. Yeah, there's three like there's three big conversations in this movie. There's Neo and the Oracle, Neo, yeah. Morpheus, and Trinity, and the Merovingian, and then Neo and the Architect. If you don't fully kind of you know understand everything they're saying, it it, it could be tough and. And that's not saying you're dumb if you don't, because I didn't either. 
Um, it's just saying the way it's written, the language that they use. People don't talk this. You know, the architect's using words like ergo, vis-a-vis, you know, there's all this. He's saying words that is not easy to crack. So, and I see why some people don't like it. And that's so, the thing. Uh, like, yeah. And you're right, because like even when they're in the, in the restaurant with the French guy and he's talking about the chocolate cake, right? Not yeah. many people know what the hell he's talking about. Like he programmed a chocolate cake to turn the girl on. So he could go right. in the bathroom with her. Like that whole scene was just for him to get a BJ in the bathroom. Yeah. But he just, they made it into this big 10 minute scene of him going, oh, and I'm like, dude, I don't talk French. And le pepe. Yeah, le pepe, right? He goes, oh, the fa- my favorite, uh, my favorite language of all of them is French because I, I yeah. like it, the French. And I'm like, okay. To cool. curse. He said, it sounds the best to curse. Yeah. And then he's all, I love that scene. Yeah, that's hilarious. No, it is, but anyway, uh, again, and yeah. I like the character. Right I, I love that character. But um, all right, so let's get to overall. So overall, it's a strong movie for me. I, I've always liked The Matrix Reloaded. Uh, it's one of the movies where I know people hate the sequels in general. I feel like, this is my opinion, but I feel like people lump Revolutions and Reloaded together and just say they, you know, because I, I, from what I remember, I didn't love Revolutions. Now, I have only ever watched it, I think, once. I revisited the first one and I've seen this one quite a bit. The third one just it, it never felt like going back. So I'm actually really looking forward to watching it next week. But I think people lump them in together and say they're just both bad. And I disagree. I think The Matrix Reloaded is a good movie. I think it, it has great action scenes. It has great actors in it. You know, they added to the cast. You get Jada Pinkett Smith now. You got, um, you know, just a bigger cast in general. I love the new guy, uh, Link. I love Link in this I like movie. Link. I think yeah. he's a great, yeah, he's a great addition. So I really like it. I gave it a four. It's not a five to me. The The first one's a pretty much perfection, but this one's not. But I think it does well as a sequel in the sense of watch The Matrix 1 now and then put on Matrix Reloaded. Look how much bigger the movie looks. You know what I mean? It looks bigger. It looks cleaner. It looks like it just looks better in a lot of ways. So, yeah, it, it, it's bigger, but not better. So I gave it a four. Yeah. Uh, overall, and it's going to be shocking, right? Because I like I said, the, the, the storyline, I gave it a three, right? Overall, I kind of enjoyed it now. Like, you're yeah. rewatching, I said, wait a minute, wait a minute. And, like, I totally <laughs> forgot. I was like, I kind of enjoyed it. I was like, kind of like. The liked. Matrix revisited. That's right. I revisited, <laughs> yeah. right? I took the blue pill yeah. or whatever the hell the what, what color it was, the red or whatever. Um, the green pill. The green pill. I gave it a four. I, and I agree with you. Like it, it, it was such a, it was a big grand of a movie, right? Like a big set pieces everywhere. Yeah. And you got the highway, which you could tell they really shot in a real highway from multiple camera uh, um, oh, uh, yeah. directions. Um, I bet they those, shot the hell like, out of that scene. Yeah, just, they, they, they really did. Yeah, they must have took weeks upon weeks just to shoot from each direction and where the cars are going to go. That looked amazing. I love the fighting scenes were really good. Keanu Reeves was really good. Even Agent Smith was good. Like I said, if you remove that whole stupid CGI with the, with the Agent Smiths all multiplying, and it, yeah. that thing will be a great movie. Like, even yeah. with the complex storyline, if you remove all those CGI, but then again, you're right, 2000 and uh, what was it, three? I mean, yeah, yeah. we got the Mummy Returns, right? With that crappy Scorpion Terrible. King. Terrible. That was horrible, yeah. but the movie's Sounds still amazing, worse. right? Like, the movie's, like, amazing. <laughs> I love that movie. Yeah. I love, yeah, I love the Mummy, but that looks terrible. Which we are going to cover on this podcast in the oh, future episodes. Yeah. Um, But, yeah, I give it a four. Now, I know we're going to do total points, and I think from looking at the scoring here, we are even. We might be. I got a 19 out of 25. Yeah, 19? Yeah. What you got? A four for mm-hmm. the lead. Yeah. A three for the villain, that's mm-hmm. seven. A five for action, that is 12. No, I have a 20. I have a 20 out of 20. <laughs> not a 19. That's right. Wait a minute. 20. We got the same score. I, I got a 20, 20 also, but we got d- yeah. numbers. We got it, same numbers across, but all yeah. uh, two numbers just flip flop. You but, like the villain better, and I like the story better. That's, it, everything else was the same. Yeah, pretty much. I mean, this is a, a really fantastic sequel if you really look at it now. You know, yeah, um, if absolutely. you're looking at it from a complex, a complexity version or if you're not looking at it as a complex and you want to sit down and join a sequel, this is it. Even- I think people need to give it another shot. I, agree. I, I really I really think it's a misunderstood movie. And I think people lump it in with revolutions because they yeah. came out close together. And, you know, I remember at the end credit. Did, well, I'm sure you didn't go to the end credits, but at the end credits of this, they have that little preview for the. Oh, yeah, 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 I did. I remember. Yeah. Oh, I got so hyped when I saw this in the Me theater. Too. You don't even know because I liked the movie when I was 16. I was like, I can't wait. And then I saw yeah. it and I was like, let's see how it goes. <laughs> well, you know what? I'm, I'm going I'm to say this, though, because we haven't even talked about this. But before we end this podcast, I would like to yeah. say if we hit 
like 500 episode of this show, we're going to do a Zion party, bro. Like straight slow motion. Oh, <laughs> Zion. Heck yeah. Play some, bang on some drums. Yeah. Yeah. That scene is so weird. That, that's is. one of the weirdest scenes in the movie, but I, lo- I love it. I <laughs> swore I was watching like Blade when it's going to be like, blood, yeah. blah, boom, ba, do, ba, do, ba, do. like, like, <laughs> what's he saying? Just going to walk through. Um, yeah. Then it became like a porno, right? Because it started banging yeah. Trinity. In Everybody the, started in being naked and stuff. Yeah. And then, yeah, Trinity <laughs> in the cave, you know, like, he's doing like, whatever. You know? He's doing the dance. Yeah, he's just, uh, like this. yeah. There was oh, a lot man. of and stuff. I saw it. It's, it's in 4K HDR. So oh. if that's your thing, get it on 4K. It's yeah, good. we're gonna do it here. We're gonna do it here on the Action Movie Guys podcast. We have five hundred. So we're gonna make sure you tune in for that. <laughs> <laughs> tune in for that episode. Yeah. Woo! Um, all right, Nate, you know what to do. <laughs> yeah, so uh, with that being said, next episode you guys are going to be hearing, episode number 56 will be, oh, the full name, Fast and Furious Presents Hobbs and Shaw, mm-hmm. uh, or as we we're going to call it, Hobbs and Shaw. And then, of course, next week, we will be uh, wrapping up The Matrix with The Matrix Revolutions, a movie I have not seen since the theater. I, I, I've never watched it at home, so we'll see how that goes. Uh, and then we will be starting our Sylvester Stallone month with uh, a little movie called Tango and Cash. I don't know if you ever heard of it. Kurt Russell, Sylvester Stallone, Tango and Cash. So that's what we got coming up over the next uh, couple episodes. Yeah. So in terms of action movie, uh, in terms of uh, <laughs> social media platforms, if you want to follow us on our social media platform, please follow Nate over on Instagram at Netflix Reviews. Check out his podcast with him and his friends called Netflix Movie Reviews. Anything Levels of Geeks, you can go to www.levelsofgeeks.com if you want to download or listen to our podcast live from the actual website. You could do it there or you can download us on any or all podcast platforms, right? And then, of course, if yep. you want to follow us on our social media accounts, it is Action Movie Guys Podcast on Instagram now. And then on Twitter is IMG Podcast on Twitter. And then, of course, now we got a Facebook groups, right, for Action Movie mm-hmm. Guys. Yeah. We got a Facebook.com slash group slash Action Movie Guys. And, of course, we have another one for Levels of Geeks also. So, with that said, I'm your host, Alex Figueroa, and that is... Nate from Netflix Reviews. Be awesome to each other and geek out.